Okay. Okay, so with that, I think we're gonna get started. Just wanna confirm, do you guys see a little recording icon on the upper left-hand corner of your screen? Sarah, do you see the recording? Um, Just wanna make sure I yeah, start it. Okay, great, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll get started now. So uh, uh, welcome, my name is Josh Barron. I'm the Executive uh, Director for Lumen Learning here in the Northeast. And I'm gonna be helping facilitate today's SUNY CUNY Faculty OER Roundtable webinar. Uh, today's series is uh, focused on the Waymaker Sociology OER course, and specifically the work that Dr. Sarah Holland Hoyland and her student Miriam Rodriguez have been doing at Hostos Community College in the CUNY system. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce them a little bit more formally just here in a few minutes once I kind of do some introductory stuff. Uh, so we'll come back to hear from them in just a moment. In terms of how we plan to use uh, the time that we have today, I'm going to start out uh, with a very brief introduction of Waymaker. I'm going to do a lightning demo, so buckle in. It's going to be very quick and fast, but just to give you a sense of how the platform works. And then I'll also share a little bit of the national research findings around impact on student success and so forth. I'll then turn it over to Sarah and Miriam. They'll talk more specifically about the work they've been doing at Hostess Community College, share some of the uh, local findings that they have. And I think it's great uh, we have uh, Miriam with us because you'll get a chance to hear directly from a student about uh, her experience with it. And they'll share some lessons learned and we'll do some Q&A at the end. I would really highly encourage everybody to ask questions, though, as we go. So the best way to do that is in the chat room and I'll be monitoring that. Um, and we'll just kind of pause and answer questions, try to make it as interactive as possible. Uh, before I go any further, I want to just highlight for everybody this uh, resource in case you're not familiar with it. So this is the openmys.org, openness uh, website. Uh, this is a collaboration between the SUNY and CUNY systems. And it's part, if you're not familiar with it, the $8 million that was allocated by the state of New York last year to help support uh, faculty who are adopting and particularly scaling up the use of open educational resources. The two systems are collaborating now to support faculty members and this website is a great place to go to get a lot of resources, learn about events that are coming up. Uh, and if you're interested, reach out to get help from either uh, system. If you go to the engage area on the site, you'll see a, a panels, <coughs> sorry, buttons there where you can click to fill out a quick form and someone can follow up and give you some help. Uh, Lumen is partnered and has been partnered with SUNY and CUNY for several years now also to support the use and scaling of OER among faculty members. So we're also uh, very actively involved in, in uh, some of the services associated uh, or that you'll find out about if you go to the website. If you're not familiar with Lumen, uh, I think it's important or I like to share that all of us are, are really very dedicated to this common mission of enabling unprecedented learning for all students. And we really do that by combining the benefits of open educational resources along with powerful instructional technology platforms. And what we do find is that when we bring those two together, we're able to just not just save students uh, lots of money in terms of reducing textbook costs, but I think more importantly, can really begin to uh, impact positively on student success metrics like final course grades, completion rates, and so forth. We're particularly focused in helping uh, at-risk students uh, in this, this work. And so, again, that's one of the reasons why uh, we, we so much value and appreciate the work that's happening in both the SUNY and CUNY systems, because uh, they serve uh, really often disadvantaged student populations. Uh, so the uh, platform that we're going to hear about today is called Waymaker, and I think it really kind of embodies this mission that we have around combining open educational resources, in this case with uh, Next Generation Courseware. The Waymaker project began in 2013 as part of a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation project that Lumen was uh, leading, uh, along with about eight other institutions around the country. So we spent time first building out this platform, uh, organizing and assembling the open educational resources that went into it and then deploying it at fairly large scale across those institutions as part of a large research study looking at uh, how this was impacting, again, not just on cost savings, but I think even more importantly on student success. And again, I'll share some of those research findings here uh, in just a minute with you. 
before I jump in and, <clears throat> and do this lightning demo, just a couple of things in terms of some of the learning design principles that we have followed and putting um, Waymaker together. So as I've mentioned already, a uh, major focus around using open educational resources. This ensures day one access to the content and obviously uh, dramatically reduces the cost of the materials. Uh, we also focus on a mastery learning kind of approach. And so the idea here is that uh, we really provide students with lots of opportunities throughout all of the materials to practice what they've learned, apply what they've learned, get feedback on that. And then at the end of each module, ask them to really demonstrate they've mastered the concepts before they move on to the next set of materials. A lot of individualized feedback for students. So again, as they're going through the materials, you'll hear and see in a second, there's lots of self-checks, places where they'll go through, kind of show what they know so far, and then get uh, kind of individualized feedback from the system. And then I think importantly, <coughs> excuse me, last but not least here is an analytics-based faculty dashboard, excuse me. Uh, where we use a lot of data that's being collected behind the scenes as students interact with the platform to surface for the instructor which students are struggling in the course and then provide some uh, easy to use tools to reach out, intervene, and provide some personal kind of interventions with students to help thing, uh, turn things around. So with that, let me uh, exit out of the slides here for a moment and uh, show this very quick lightning demo and I'll check in with folks. Sarah, you're able to see my browser screen now? Okay, so the uh, first thing I'm going to show is really from the student side, and you'll see I'm uh, demoing this in Blackboard. Uh, it integrates with pretty much any uh, learning management system. Uh, this is just the one I happen to have set up here for today. And each, uh, when, once you uh, integrate Waymaker into uh, your LMS, uh, the uh, content for the materials come into these content folders, and I'll just go into one of these to show quickly what that looks like. Great, hopefully my internet connection didn't die here. Hold on a sec, let's try it again. Well, and I can chime in quickly while you're getting in there, Josh. But, Perfect. You know, the great thing about the course copy function is that mine looks similar to this, but then some of the elements that I'd previously used in my online and hybrid courses if I had videos from our library databases, for example, or discussion questions or other things that were mine, mm -hmm. I could creatively merge both. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it looks similar, but yet faculty can still personalize um, their course management system to reflect their own teaching style as well. Great. I really appreciate you mentioning that too, Sarah, because I think it, it is a great way of customizing the materials. Uh, you can come in here and just, you know, change the name of these things. You can add your own stuff. You can move these around if you want to reorder them. There are lots of things you can do. And as you said, bring in your own materials and also bring in things like library materials, which maybe aren't all o OER materials, but your students have access to the library resources. That's another great uh, benefit of integrating the materials together like this. Um, I, uh, I should also quickly mention, although I'm quickly going to run out of time here, that um, all of the content is separate than the tools. And so uh, in addition to getting the integration, you also get a link you can send students to the actual content. And that way, once the course is over and they may not be able to access their Blackboard or LMS site anymore, the content's still available uh, to students forever. So I'm going to go into the study plan, which each module here includes. <coughs> And the study plans are organized into these three parts, getting started, dive in, and finish strong. Uh, each one begins with kind of a why it matters section that really just explains to students the real world applications of what they're about to learn. And then they actually start with a pre-assessment. So this is a really an a, a ungraded uh, test that's designed for the, allow the student to demonstrate any prior knowledge that they have coming into the materials. It's also a way of collecting some data, which in a few minutes you'll see, hey, oh, that's then used on the faculty dashboard. I've obviously guessed here, maybe I should have asked Miriam to, uh, <laughs> to take the pre-assessment for us. Uh, but obviously, I didn't do terribly well guessing here, but this is some of the personalized feedback to the students. So it tells you right up front where you have some knowledge and then areas that you might need to be lurking, uh, learning more about, focusing your time on more. It's not going to give you the right answer, but it will tell you what section of the materials that particular questions associated with, so you can go back and, and spend some time there. So I'm going to return to the study plan, and I'm actually going to now 
kind of activate some fake data here just so you can see a little bit more about what how it would look like for if a real student was using this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting over a cold here. And so in the, uh, I, by activating the student uh, fake data, you see here that each one of these content tiles where the content is, is located uh, is now color coded. And that's indicating the student where they have some strengths and weaknesses in the pretest and helps them figure out where they may need to spend a little bit extra time as they go through the materials. I'm not gonna take time to uh, show each section here, but if I expand open the content tiles, you'll see that there's a combination of reading materials, video content, in some cases of simulations, interactive materials. And then at the end of each one of these is another self-check. Again, this is intentionally ungraded, and designed for them to just be able to check their knowledge and make sure they're understanding stuff as they get through the materials. At the end, in the finish strong section, there's a summary here, uh, and then there's a graded quiz. The graded quiz, uh, by default, the students get two attempts. Oops, and I'll again, after the first attempt, I'll turn on more fake data here, you can see that they get more personalized feedback indicating where they might want to go back and spend more time reviewing content before they take the second attempt in the quiz, which obviously, hopefully, then they'll, they'll do better on. Uh, I should mention this is integrated to the LMS Blackboard, so the graded quizzes or the grades for the quizzes will automatically go into the, the gradebook for you. So let me wrap up the quick demo here uh, by going back and just showing the faculty dashboard very quickly. I'm already over time here, and I apologize. I'm actually traveling at the moment at a hotel, and I think my internet connection here isn't super strong, so hopefully this will come up here in a second. Well, and in terms of the quiz, I think it's also important to just remind yeah. folks that, you know, like anything else, you can weight the quizzes to the extent that you want them to count toward the grade. So, like in my class, it was weighted at 20%, mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. So they took 10 quizzes, which it was a very small percentage of their total course grade than each individual quiz. Um, but I found that it gave students confidence when they were doing well on the quizzes. Mm -hmm. and part of that confidence and help them do better on their much longer right. in-class midterm and in-class final exam. Yeah. Great. And that was perfect because it came up for me. So, so here's the faculty dashboard. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail here again in the interest of time. But what you'll see here is it's now indicating there are three students who are struggling in the course and may need some help. So I'm going to go in and see which those students are. Again, this is all uh, from data the system's collecting some analytics running in the background. I can see that Justin here um, looks like maybe he's struggling a bit. I can come in and see uh, where what's going on. It looks like he's taking his first attempt on the quiz and didn't do so well, 75, has been doing the practice activities. That to me means that maybe Justin needs a little bit of extra attention and help. I can come back to the dashboard. You can see there's a messaging tool here, which I can click on. Gives me a templated message to reach out. You can see it's really nice. It knows because of the, the uh, quiz exactly where Justin is struggling in the content and identifies that automatically. And then gives you a template here uh, to save some time, but it, it's all customizable. So if you want to erase this and put your own stuff in, you can easily easily do that. There's also, uh, there's other templates, there's automated messaging and so forth, but if there's questions about, we can uh, talk about here as, as we go on. So let me uh, come back to the slides here and wrap up and turn it over uh, to Sarah and Miriam. I just want to share a little bit here in terms of some of the research findings. Uh, so uh, two thing, two uh, uh, findings I, I think are, are relevant here, or at least for us, I think very significant. Uh, this is a uh, rather focused study we did at Cerritos College as part of the Bill and Melinda Gates funded project. They like to look at this concept of course throughput. So the idea is of all the students who start a course, how many make it through the drop period or drop period and they get a C or better in the, in the class. And you can see looking at the control group uh, versus the uh, group using Raymaker, it's almost a 20 point difference between the two in terms of that success rate completing the course. And given the huge uh, attention and focus right now on trying to improve uh, graduation rates, uh, grades, com uh, course completion rates uh, throughout higher education. I think this is very meaningful uh, kind of finding. So again, not just saving students uh, money, but at the same time seeing results like this is something we think is very, very powerful. Last really speaks to our mission to focus on working with disadvantaged students 
Um, and so we are really interested in the line that uh, use of Waymaker seems to erase what's often referred to the Pell penalty. As you may know, students who are Pell eligible tend to perform on average academically lower than their non-Pell eligible peers. And what we found from this study across all the institutions is that uh, use of Waymaker seems to erase that. So students using Waymaker, Pell eligible students using Waymaker were performing very close to their non-Pell eligible peers who are not using Waymaker. Um, and so that's something that we like to always highlight here. <coughs> so before my voice goes and uh, I run out of steam, let me now uh, introduce more formally uh, Sarah and Miriam and uh, have them share some of the work they've been doing at Hostos. I'm quickly trying to move my windows around so I can do a, a job, a better job here at, at, at sharing their background. So Sarah is an assistant professor of so sociology at Cooney Hostos Community College. She began, uh, became involved in OER initiatives in June of 2017 and taught Soch 101 with Lumens Waymaker in his, the English as a Second Language section of that course in a hybrid section of the course in fall of 2017. Uh, Miriam is a first-year student at Hostos Community College. She worked in local politics, the medical field, and as an office manager at a law firm before coming to Hostos. Mimi also raises a family. She took Social 101 using Lumen's Waymaker with Dr. Hoyland in fall 2017 and is currently an associate, um, uh, uh, associate's degree major. Sorry. So with that, uh, let me turn it over to Sarah and Miriam, and I will also be advancing their slides. When you guys are ready, just let me know, and I'll go ahead and do that. Great. So we're going to start out with just a, a real quick background about our institution um, to give everyone a better idea of what our student population looks like, um, what are some of the issues that our students are facing, and, and how we think OERs and particularly Waymaker addresses some of those challenges. Um, challenges and I would also say strengths, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, first, Ostos is part of the City University of New York system. Um, we're celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. So it was founded in 1968. Um, and our, our college has a pretty well-known long history of um, struggle to educate Puerto Rican students in the South Bronx, um, from, you know, more traditional college students to um, non-traditional college students. And so, you know, as you can see, our, our ethnic composition has changed a bit, you know, from the origination of the college where it was more Hispanic, mm -hmm. um, but we're still a Hispanic serving institution like Lehman and a few others in CUNY at 59% Hispanic, 22% Black, um, I didn't put the demographics for our immigrant population, but um, the majority of our students at this point are speaking a language other than English at home. Mm -hmm. um, we are predominantly female yes. at 67%, um, and many of these females have raised children. Some, like Miriam, have raised other people's children, grandchildren. Um, and so, you know, they bring a real strength and, and oftentimes a focus to the classroom. I think that you know, potentially other institutions um, might not have in the same way. And so, while there are challenges, um, there are also incredible strengths. Yeah. Um, similarly, when we talk about things like our, uh, the household income of our students, you can see 60% um, are in that zero to $20,000 a year category. And another 27% are at uh, the 20 to $40,000 $40, a year, I'm sorry. And so, you know, what that means for us as people who live in New York City is that many of our students are living on extremely limited income and that the cost of textbooks can be prohibitive to advancing their education. And so, you know, I'm always a little surprised when my colleagues and, and probably those of you who are tuned in as well are surprised to find out that students aren't purchasing textbooks. And if we think about the social reality of our students, it's really not very surprising. Um, you know, if a $150 textbook means groceries for a week or two, mm -hmm. or a textbook, they're going to get groceries for a week or two. And so, um, you know, clearly this is, this is a definite challenge, but I think it's also the beauty of OERs and particularly Lumen, um, because what it does is it gives students immediate access. And so um, for Miriam, for example, the course was hybrid. 
and she had access to all of her course materials a week before classes started. And students like Miriam, who are coming back to college after a long break and they're extremely motivated, they're on Blackboard, they're reading what's assigned, they're getting ahead, and, um, and they're able to do that because they're not waiting for their financial aid check to come in to purchase textbooks. They're not waiting for a book to come in the mail that's gonna take a few weeks. Um, you know, or a book that never gets delivered or, you know, some of the other issues we have in an urban environment. The other graph is showing the number of students at Ostos that have developmental needs. Um, so here and probably in most places, uh, Sociology 101 is a course with no prerequisites. So generally I'm getting students who are coming in in their first or second semester. Um, some of them, like my ESL class that I'll briefly talk about, they're in all remedial courses except for mine. Um, but as you can see, only 17% um, of our students have no developmental needs. So one of the things that we want to just briefly touch upon is the way that, as you could probably see from your course shell, Josh, um, the individualized learning and the way that the modules are broken down in Waymaker is extremely helpful for students who are struggling with reading. Um, I think it makes it much easier to chunk material in terms of teaching it. Most of the students in Introduction to Sociology struggle with theoretical concepts. And for each unit in the Waymaker course shell, uh, the theory is a separate module. And so students, you know, what I always encourage them is to go over that again and again and again. Um, similarly, when there's a topic that, you know, half of the class or two thirds of the class is struggling with, and I can look at that through the analytics, then that's how I design my next class, is that we go over the particular topics that have been highlighted through Waymaker that are challenging. And even though I've been teaching this class for 10 years, it's actually been helpful um, you know, after nine and a half years teaching it and trying to figure it out on my own to just have a system that does it for me. So um, just some brief data, um, and this, you know, Full disclosure is data that I compiled myself through Blackboard. I'm going to run it through our Office of Institutional Research and make sure that my numbers all line up. But this should be a fairly accurate look at, um, I taught a hybrid course in the fall. And so the blue line is that course that I used Waymaker for the first time, 28 students enrolled. And the gray and the uh, orange, excuse me, were um, hybrid courses that I taught in fall of 16 and 17 and then spring of 16 and 17. So what I just want to quickly point out here is that you can see the course completion is much higher. Um, and particularly in hybrid courses, I find it's very difficult to keep students in their seats and coming to that one day of class a week after the verification of attendance. Um, students tend to just stop coming and stop participating in the online components. And so, um, you know, particularly where you can see, you know, only half of the students, slightly over half in the spring of 16 and the spring of 17 were actually finishing the course. And finishing the course, I mean, where I was able to assign them a grade based on their work. So some of those were getting Ds and Fs, but they were at least making it to the end of the class and taking the final exam. And then the next slide just shows sort of a bigger picture of what that course completion looks like. Um, and you can see that there's significant difference in terms of who's finishing the class and earning a grade. Um, another issue that we're dealing with at Ostos and I, I believe across CUNY is, is the number of students who are getting WUs um, and WNs. So again, these are students who um, were not able to assign a grade because they're not completing enough work to get the grade would be the WU. Um, and so the section with the, and here I have the numbers, I apologize for not including them before. So there were 28 students in the OER hybrid section that was Miriam's class in the fall. Um, and you can see there's a significant decline in the number of Ws and WUs, um, you know, one less student withdrew, but typically that's not our big issue. It's the students who stay in the course, mm -hmm. but don't actually finish. They just stop coming to class. They never formally withdraw. Um, and then, you know, we're put in a difficult position where the WU really hurts their financial aid, but they haven't done the work to actually even give them an F. And so um, it's a problematic place. And so this was, um, you know, exceptionally positive for me to see the difference in the terms, in terms of the number of students who are completing.
So, you know, we're looking at 86% completed the course in the OER. And in those previous four semesters, so all together, there were 108 students, 65 were completing the course. Um, I also teach a section of sociology that is limited to ESL students. So, you know, for CUNY people, they're taking ESL 35 and 36, which is generally kind of second tier ESL. Um, so they have some English proficiency, but uh, there's still a ways typically before they're gonna test out of their um, CAT W and their CAT R. So for this particular section, retention is less the problem um, than getting the students to get a C or higher. Um, so as you can see, you know, course completion for these ESL sections is pretty high. Students are very invested in, in completing the course and getting a degree. Um, the problem is many of them end up with Ds and Fs. Um, and for them, if they end up with a D financially, it is devastating because they can lose, um, they can actually have to pay the college back for their course and so on and so forth. So, you know, one of the greatest things about Waymaker I found in the fall, and you could also see this with the hybrid sections as well, this was consistent across both groups, but the number of A's almost doubles. Um, it doubles in this case, and it was doubled in the other cases. And so the students who want to review the material over and over and over, that really take these assessments seriously, and the formative assessments where they can go back and try it again, um, that use the study plan in the ways that are possible, are really benefiting with increased GPA. And I see that as being a huge bonus in terms of not only their self-esteem, but their ability to move on and do well in other courses, um, you know, their identity as a student, as a college student, as someone who's capable, as someone who belongs here. And these are all issues, I think, um, you know, that research also supports that our students are really struggling with. So sort of to wrap it up, um, and then, you know, hopefully some things will come up in questions. Um, you know, that accessibility that I mentioned before, before the semester starts, I think is really crucial. Um, you know, I've been teaching at Ostos for five years, and I taught in the Florida college system before this for five years, and it's really disheartening when a student is trying so hard, and then they would come into my office and tell me, you know, two months into the class that they didn't have a book. Um, you know, that they were either photocopying from the library or they were spending long hours trying to schedule around children and jobs and, and other obligations to just be able to read the material. Some of them were doing it just from notes in class. Um, and so this kind of universal accessibility before the semester starts is, I think, a huge, huge bonus for our students. Um, and also, uh, I think, it's crucial to mention the difference between Waymaker and other OERs. So last fall, I taught the two sections of Waymaker. It was a regular um, intro to sociology hybrid course. And the other section was this ESL course. And so both are relatively small. They're capped at 28 and 25 respectively. I also taught an anthropology class and I taught a race and ethnicity course. Um, and at Ostos, like other community colleges across the country, our teaching loads are pretty heavy. and so. Four classes in a semester is definitely the norm. It can go up to five or even six if, if someone is teaching an overload. And so the difference in terms of, of my time that I was investing in the courses, so I, was, I developed OERs for the other courses, but there weren't Waymaker courses. Um, and so I'm happy to sort of answer any questions about the differences between the two. Um, but certainly, you know, what Waymaker does that other OERs don't. So where I was finding my own texts, I was still using my own quizzes. I was responding to students as I would see them struggle. You know, it was all sort of directed by me being very involved in the Blackboard shells. Um, so what Waymaker does is it allows faculty to regularly connect with students through the automated messaging system. And the messages can be personalized. Um, you know, each instructor can go in and rewrite them, which I definitely did because I wanted it to sound like me and I wanted the students to, to know that it was me behind the automated push. Um, it also really enhanced a flipped classroom approach. And so um, what I would do is assign the material ahead of time and students would read and take their quiz before we talked about the content in class. And because the quizzes were weighted so lightly, um, it was more of a way to just make sure they were ready. And, it was an amazing semester where 
I would say on average, probably two thirds of the students were well prepared for class. They'd read the material, they'd done the quizzes. I mean, consistently. Um, and sometimes, you know, as high as three quarters or even 80%, which for our particular institution, that class, which is, um, you know, one of the many classes that's considered a roadblock to student success, high levels of Ds and Fs and Ws and WUs, um, was a tremendous success in my view. Um, in addition, the content is engaging and high quality. So, you know, as compared to some of the other materials that I've used for these other courses, the Waymaker course and the way the modules are set up, the quizzes, the formative quizzes, the substantive quizzes, I found all that to be, um, you know, in terms of instructional design, much better than what I was able to do and what I had time to do. Um, and also what I found, uh, than what I found in other materials as well. Um, and that module organization, once again, just makes it much easier for students to focus on the core ideas, to identify areas that they're struggling in, and then to go back and to review, to look at them again, or more importantly, to be able to ask an informed question in class rather than just get a poor grade and not understand why. Um, and so, well, you know, I'm a huge supporter of all OERs, and I think, you know, we'll talk about scaling in the next point, but I think, um, Waymaker does offer something very special um, in the sense that the things that I would love to do if I was teaching one or two classes, I can do with Waymaker if I have four or five classes. Um, and, and for me, it's really rewarding. It's rewarding to have students respond to the emails that Waymaker is sending directly to me, thanking me for caring about their progress. Um, and so um, in terms of scaling, you know, as I just sort of alluded to, I mean, I. I would love by the time my 10 year old son gets to college, just having a completely OER college environment. Um, I will do as much as I can to make that happen. One thing I did last semester, um, so as often happens, we had an adjunct come in. He'd never taught before. He was a graduate student, very theoretical, very up in the clouds, completely unfamiliar with our students um, and their learning needs, and really just teaching and learning in general. And, he was really struggling and the students were complaining. And so what I did was I just offered him my course shell and Josh and his team were able to give my Waymaker Sociology 101 to this adjunct. And he still did whatever he was gonna do in class, but then the students were able to access the material and to get feedback in a way that was meaningful to them. Um, and so I think there's a lot of different ways that this can go. Um, I think, uh, in particular, I'm, I'm working on developing an anthropology OER right now, um, but especially, you know, as Waymaker continues to expand and more courses are offered through Waymaker, I think it's going to be a great option where, for example, part-timers who are coming in and, and aren't paid to develop and do instructional design and, and course content development can just be given these shells and they can modify, they can choose which parts they want to use and which parts they don't. They still have complete academic freedom, but it takes some of that workload off of people who are not compensated to do that. Um, and I've met with several adjuncts who are very excited about using Waymaker. They want it integrated into their classes. I've had colleagues in my department who teach psychology, um, and currently I don't believe anyone's using Waymaker psychology. They're now interested in using it as well. And so, um, I think, you know, this is a great way is kind of like most things that works through relationships, right? Like it works through students talking oh, yeah. about what it means to them. It works um, when faculty talk to other faculty about their experience. You know, of course, data helps, um, but certainly participating in webinars like this and just kind of sharing one's experiences is, I think, the way that we're going to be able to scale it up in a way that people who might be reticent toward free online resources um, and OERs and don't understand them and think that we're just going to stick Wikipedia pages in our courses mm -hmm. and call it a day. Mm -hmm. um, I think slowly they'll be able to come around. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Miriam. Hi. <laughs> um, to follow through in what um, Dr. Hoyland was saying, I'm still not that familiar to call you Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> not in public anyway. <laughs> but um, Waymaker for me and my experience was I was that was my very first semester coming back to school as an adult 
and I'm being told that I'm going to be taking a hybrid course. I didn't know what that was, um, but I was scared because I'm being told that I'm not going to be in front of the professor to learn this material that I didn't know what it was about, never mind what sociology was. But through Waymaker and taking the time to read the material at my leisure, I was able to feel more confident in coming to class the following week and have her ask questions that were familiar to me. The guidance that the Waymaker did for me, it kind of helped me to learn how to study in my pace, where I knew that I would feel confident enough to pass whatever quiz she would give us in class because there were a few times you did you gave us a impromptu like okay let's see what you guys did why because she noticed on her side of the way maker that some of the kids weren't even doing the homework they weren't reading they really were not passing the initial quizzes Waymaker also helped on the fact that financially i would never have been able to buy that enormous book, number one. Number two, it would also be, I don't think, it, I think the class would have been a yawner. People would have been asleep because it would mainly be you telling us what's in the book, right? The Waymaker kind does, like I said, it helped me to take my time. Let me just bring one more point that just came to me as I was listening to you. Um, I watch the students in my class. I am a full-time student. I'm here every day of the week, all day long, just about. And it seems like I'm the oldest one in my classes, my current classes, even my past classes. That's okay. So <laughs> I see how a lot of kids that come in as, as, as brand new you know, kids in college, they're excited to be here. They have these dreams in their heads. But once they get to, you know, to the classes, especially English, it's very hard for them for some reason. They can't understand what they're reading. They have a hard time doing a simple essay. When a professor says, I need a one-page essay, just give me an And you see them looking at the professor like, what? And some, I've, I've made friends with some of them, and they, I don't know what's going on in high schools, but they're not prepared at all. They are not. And usually on the, I've noticed a few of the kids that I have met friends with, they have failed two or three classes, especially English, because they can't read or write correctly. And there is even, I wasn't aware that they give us a, a freshman class on your first semester. I never got that. So I don't know. I don't know if that was because of my age. I don't know what happened. But now I'm being told I'm supposed to take it. I'm in the middle of my third semester. Why am I going to go back to take the, the freshman year? But if they're not teaching these kids that on their freshman year classes, what's going on? Why are these kids struggling? And a lot of them are very smart. They're great with numbers. A lot of them are good with numbers. Tell them to write a four-page essay and they're stuck. And I tell them, but yeah, you was going to say something? Well, I'm just going to jump in for one second, Mirella, because it, it's really, you've I've not heard that from you before. And I, it, one of the things we should follow up on is that there's a, a, a lot of Waymaker uh, developmental English courses too. And one of the things we're interested yeah. in experimenting with is kind of benefiting or you leveraging OER and remixing this stuff. So it'd be interesting to see if you brought in a couple of, you know, basic writing uh, modules to the sociology course, and then it's, you know, optional, you don't have to do it, but if you need help writing a two-page essay, you know, here's a resource. So I just yes, couldn't, that would couldn't be stop awesome. myself jumping. And, and it kind of, I think that the young kids mm -hmm. in our class that, that I had with you, I think that because of the Waymaker, they were able to understand the material because they're not being forced to, okay, tomorrow I need you to be ready. You need to read this chapter and be ready because I need to give you this quiz because this is the standard, uh, what you got to follow as a professor. So the Waymaker would give them the chance to go back and go back. And okay, wait a minute, I didn't get that. Why did I just miss those three questions? Like Josh, bomb. Even <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, what I'm trying to get to is the fact that the Waymaker allows the student to be comfortable at home, to do their homework, to review it. It guides them to do that. It guides them to be able to say, okay, you know, the system is telling me that I'm failing here. Let me go back because I had to do that. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it also helped me in other classes because it helped me out to, I really don't want to spend four hours sitting here with the Waymaker. Um, I need to like review how I'm studying so like that I can get done with that and move on to my other classes because it, does, it is a time consuming um, um, practice when you're at home and you have to do homework for four classes. And in between those four classes, you have to study for a midterm or a final or a, like in my English class, we have quizzes every single time we meet. Immediately we walk through the door. So if I'm not reading the Iliad and for that day, I'm done. I'm, I'm going to fail. And, and it's also really great to hear that, uh, Miriam, because uh, so much of the kind of behind the scenes work that's gone in through the Gates grant to Waymaker has been applying a lot of learning science theory and uh, instructional uh, design methodologies to kind of um, do what you're describing. So it's kind of great to hear in the real world that it's, it's achieving yeah. that goal in terms of, you know, in the past, you might read a textbook. You, you don't know if you really got it or not. And you know when you take the midterm or something, and that's kind of too late to do a lot about it. If As you're going through the materials, you're able to kind of jump and, and say, let me, let me take some practice activities. Let me do a simulation or an interactive. And therefore, oh, no, actually, I didn't understand that. Yeah. I can go back. Mm -hmm. So it's just really exciting for someone who's been involved in the other side of all this to hear you talking about kind of um, yeah, and it's doing so, the things we hoped yeah. it would do. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many students that will not buy the textbooks. I agree with what mm -hmm. that. I can see it. And you know how many kids use their phones to take pictures or listen, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make it in class today, but can you send me a, a picture of what was given in class today? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them fail not because they're not mm -hmm. getting the information, but not everybody takes notes that, in the same manner. So it might, those notes might work for that individual child, but then for the next one that he's trying to help, it just does not compute. So with the Waymaker, it cuts everything out. They don't have to worry about that because immediately that you signed on, it tells you and you can get on the Blackboard. Well, and to, you know, to build off of what Miriam was saying about the writing components of each course. So in my class, even though many students are going to be in remedial writing, they do a lot of writing and introduction to sociology. And a lot of it is tied to, um, for example, I'll assign a film from Canopy, which is a yes. free download from the mm -hmm. library website. And then they have to write an extended response, but it's based on their assigned reading and the particular terms and theoretical concepts from a unit. And so um, I think that the difference I saw between the quality of writing when students were using Waymaker versus a textbook mm. was pretty extreme. I mean, mm. I found students were much better equipped to use the terms in a way that um, they yeah, demonstrated yeah, yeah. understanding yes. and their discussion forum grades were higher. And so, you know, in my class, the quiz grades don't count for very much. And even though typically students do well on the quizzes, you know, technically they're open book, they're on time, there's usually around six questions. So when I first saw Waymaker, I was quite frankly a little critical, like, mm -hmm. well, you know, they could just be looking the answers up. Like, I mean, this, I'm not sure this is really measuring what they know, but what it was doing is it was getting them to go over the material again and again and again. And so then when they had to do something that was applying knowledge to something they had not seen before and something they couldn't just Google, mm -hmm. they were having very full discussions on Blackboard and in class. And so yes. then when they came into class and they had to do it without any outside resources, and again, writing extended responses, lots and lots of writing, I could see that they actually had better understanding of the core concepts in the class. And it will bring the students together because the discussions would actually introduce the students mm -hmm. that were not talking in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So the classroom became not just a classroom per se, as they were used to that kind of an atmosphere. Okay, I'm sitting here. I don't care what's happening behind me or next to me. Uh, I need to focus. It was actually a, hey, how you doing? Did you do that? Did you do the other? No, I didn't do it. Where'd you get it? And it was like, coming home it was like it was it, yeah um, where is she at how come she's not in the classroom we're ready you know <laughs> it was that kind of an atmosphere and that helps that helps there's no words to put that helps a lot because I see it in regular classrooms that do not use this uh, platform and a lot of the students are sitting in the back like this and kind of like hiding that yesterday my English teacher said you know how you just disrespected me by texting in the middle of the class 
because they're bored to death. They have no interaction with each other. They're lost in the material. You're talking about the Odyssey, the Odyssey, and we're reading this every single day. We have a quiz every, and now at the end that there's action of killing, everybody's interested, right? And he's like, oh, now you want to get it? (laughs) And, And it's amazing and how I can compare my social class with my other classes that do not use the Waymaker or any other OER. I mean, I'm sure that they have their own platform and how they teach, but it's not coming across to these young minds that are sitting there like, impress me or get me involved because they're sitting there like. Well, and I do have to say, you know, because I did teach nine and a half years before Waymaker. And, you know, I think faculty work really hard to make their classes and Mm -hmm. And I I use all of the same elements, except I was using older versions of the textbook. And, you know, the biggest difference I see again is, you know, and I, I feel like student interaction is something that faculty are working hard on yes. if they care about teaching and learning, regardless mm-hmm. of what text they're using. Um, but again, what Waymaker did is it just provided that instant accessibility and it put everybody on equal footing from day one. And I think that's really important. Um, okay. And to, to go to Madeline's comment about more Waymaker courses in the pipeline, um, you know, I've really been trying to like <clears throat> introduction to anthropology uh, <laughs> because not only because I teach that course, but because these classes that we offer with no prerequisites um, that are huge entry level, you know, we're, we've been calling them gateway courses. That's probably a common term. Um, you know, they've been designated and we have a Title V grant to try to address the high rates of D's, F's and W's in these courses. You know, I mean, it's kind of like if we could match up Waymaker with these courses that are getting pure leader and supplemental instruction, you know, and see, like, put the two together because, you know, there's some great data behind having this mm-hmm. kind of peer to peer instruction mm-hmm. as well as, you know, accessible materials. It'd be really interesting to see, you know, if we can get more students to graduate and get a degree. Well, in my. One more thing, um, sure, sure. What, we, what I shared when we were at the conference about that one class where we couldn't get the book and it took me, it took me half through the semester, mm. this semester, to find this book that was no longer being printed. And it's my major, by the way. And, um, <laughs> and this book is no longer printed. You couldn't find it anywhere online. And when I did find it, it was a book that was supposed to cost $10. Now costs 81 bucks. And we don't use it in class. So Waymaker should have been like right in there <laughs> because I would have saved $91. So she's asking for a Waymaker for social work, Josh? I yes, <laughs> social work. Let me see what well, else. Well, uh, I'll give you Bill Gates' email address, and okay. you can shoot in the menu. No, I'm, you know, we, we are, uh, for, first of all, I should say for those um, on the webinar, we're going to move here to uh, field some questions here in just a second. Uh, let's make sure we have some time for that. Uh, we, we're always working on new, new courses, um, and so every year, two or three come out. Uh, you can obviously see that you know, these take a lot of time and effort. Um, <clears throat> we have a team of instructional designers and faculty members, subject matter experts, that, that work on them, and it takes about a year to build a whole Waymaker course together. So, uh, But we are, are working on, on, on on new courses all the time and it usually really is is where where is the the, the biggest need and we, we can have the biggest impact in terms of helping students and we look at those to try to figure out prioritization about where where things get worked on um, and one thing that I would I didn't highlight in in the uh, overview but I think is relevant here is um, like you mentioned Sarah where you're going back and looking at where students are struggling and, and, and making changes the next semester we are also doing this and it's one of the first times I've ever my career has seen real data-driven content improvement uh, processes on a continuous basis. So we're collecting de-identified data that we handle, you know, very securely um, from all students using Waymaker across the country. And we are able to go down to a very fine grain level and say, this module, this page of content is clearly not working well because students are not succeeding in the learning objectives that are associated with that content. Then our learning science engineers go in, we develop that content, try to make it more interactive, more engaging. 
Um, and then we put that back out and we can measure again to see do those improvements actually make a difference. And I think that's really exciting to me and that we can really start to use data to try to not just improve crime, but measure if we've actually done a good job. And I think over time, that's going to result in really, you know, great content. The last comment I'll make too is that, uh, you know, Waymaker is not designed to be a black box to take over the teacher in the yeah. classroom. And I think there are some solutions out there that are maybe not try to do that, but that's the direction they're moving in. Right. And so we really do think it's critical to have, you know, the faculty member, you know, bring their innovation and their pedagogical practices and build on top of what I think is a very rich set of materials and tools. Uh, but it really, it really depends on, on that delivery. You mentioned the flipped classroom model, Sarah, and I think that's a great example of where I think Waymaker is really ideally suited to, to facilitate that kind of pedagogy if you're interested in it. Um, and I think that's how it can drive really innovative learning experiences outside of just the content, which is great, but I think it also really takes a, a passionate, motivated uh, uh, instructor that, that makes the big difference in, in what happens in the classroom. And for students, which I think we can clearly see here, Miriam. So we have about seven, eight uh, minutes left here. So I would like to open it up to the group. Um, if anybody wants, I can turn your audio on if you would like to, to uh, speak, if you want to ask a question that way, or if not, you want to put it suddenly in the, the chat room. Um, That's me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so love to hear any questions or comments. Um, maybe some of you have been using Waymaker or, or, or know of others. And it looks like. I see a hand has gone up and I'm, ah, Patricia, let me turn on your mic and you should be able to talk there. There you go, sorry. Okay, um, I am interested in using the tool uh, for social work and I know you made that little joke about contact the, uh, contact Bill and Melinda, but is there anything that we can do, maybe even organized in a way to, to secure this tool for social work? Yeah, I mean, it was just a joke. So I, I do take it seriously. And uh, social work isn't one of the, the uh, courses that's currently on what we call our roadmap. I think the, the way of, of influencing that in a sense is to provide us with feedback. So just bring it up here. I will mention this to our development team as something Great, that thanks. I'm starting to hear about. Um, if you go to support.lumenlearning.com, that's our general kind of help desk support site. And you can submit a request through there. And we really encourage people to submit requests, not just for help, but you could do that there too. But when you're you know, interested in giving us feedback, either on a specific course or a specific piece of content that you're missing and you'd like to see. So I'd encourage you to do that as well. Great, sounds good. Other questions, comments? Sometimes it takes a moment or two for people to formulate stuff and put it in the chat uh, window there. So we'll give it another minute here. Uh, maybe I'll also use this just to, to note in case uh, it wasn't clear from my earlier um, opening kind of remarks. Uh, use of Waymaker uh, at this point is there's there's no cost to any CUNY or SUNY faculty and students to adopt it and using it. Um, probably the fastest way if you're interested in, in uh, getting access to it is to, um, oh, and I'm realizing I didn't put my last slide up with my email address. So you probably have that from some other emails that went out, but let me put this in here. You can shoot me an email. Happy to follow up with you most. Um, uh, all CUNY institutions are already set up with their Blackboard instances to uh, integrate Waymaker in. So it's just a matter of getting a quick uh, file and, and then um, get it set up. Uh, most SUNYs are, but if not, we can work with the SUNY institution to get that up. And the other thing um, that I can uh, give out or, or uh, do for folks that put you in a sandbox course, which is a, a hosted instance that we maintain. And it's just a place where you can go in and look at the content, play with the tools and so forth. And that's usually a good way to kind of just explore stuff. And also if you have colleagues or maybe you're an instructional designer, I know we have one on the call and you want to share this with others, you can do that. And uh, Paul, you're asking for a, a sandbox. Yep, happy to do that. And I, I, I hope, Paul, I think I said you got you in the sandbox for the biology course that we did the webinar uh, last week on as well. So just um, uh, let me know here in the chat and I'll make sure I get that. Yep. 
yeah, and I would encourage you the the account that I set up in the sandbox is something you can share with others so that you can also request the sandbox for for your colleagues. But if you want to just share your your sandbox account, that's fine as well. Well, and I think I will also just point out I I know that there's a number of minority serving institutions in the chat room and. Um, you know, I was looking at Josh's national data a little bit closer this time. We presented together a few weeks back and, you know, the see or better um, on the national data is up in the 90%, right? So 92% of students are getting a see or better, um, you know, with the textbook and, and uh, a similar number with Waymaker. And, you know, I mentioned the shift in terms of for us, we're seeing more students getting A's, you know, and perhaps there's more data behind those numbers than just, you know, the ABC. Maybe there's a, a more um, pronounced shift of students doing really well in these courses. Um, but I also wanted to point out that, you know, at OSTOS, for example, and particularly in, in the courses I teach, these sections of sociology that I've showed you today, you know, our rates of ABC are um, 63 to 65% with the OER, and they're 54% um, with a traditional textbook and so you know being able to move another 10 percent of students into that abc range is huge um, and again thinking about scaling and and i love the comments and the questions about sharing um, and i've been doing a lot of that here at ostos you know we we had some really reticent faculty um, who were just you know a little suspicious about what this was and whether students would be able to do well on our common assessment which is largely based on the textbook um, and I think for them to be able to see it and play around with it and see that, you know, as Josh mentioned, there's creative flexibility. Um, I just recently got one of our English professors, uh, I think it's English 110 here, but it's just a basic English comp class. And so he's going to be experimenting using OER as he develops a new hybrid course, uh, which will make some students very happy. <laughs> uh, and you can so get a second degree, Miriam. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and similarly, uh, even for, you know, I don't know how much content would translate to social work, but for example, I was trying to develop a social problems course as an OER and there's no social problems course, but there's certain content from the sort of overarching um, sociology course that I was able to, for example, roll into my race and ethnicity course. And so you know, I mean, there's a certain amount of creative movement that can occur if you're looking for a specific content area. Um, because quite frankly, developing an OER from scratch is, as Josh mentioned, extraordinarily time consuming. If you're not an instructional designer and you're a regular faculty member with multiple um, courses and, and other obligations, I think it can be a bit daunting. So, mm -hmm. you know, certainly like there's a push for us to say to Josh, like more Waymaker courses um, yes, yes. and rightfully so, you know, and, and hopefully some of the data and statistics will help, um, will help advance that. But I do believe to get back to Madeline, Madeline's question that there are sandbox courses available for all Waymaker OERs, correct? Yes, and uh, I was going to answer that too. So uh, if I, if the link I get in the chat room is a link to the course catalog with specifically filtering just the, the Waymaker courses. So folks can see all, I think there's 15 or 16 um, and all of those have sandboxes and most have sandboxes for all of the major LMSs as well. So if you want to let me know which LMS you're in, if you all of CUNY's using Blackboard, but SUNY may be in different LMSs, I can make sure we get you a sandbox in, in your own LMS so it's more familiar to you. With, with that, we're, we're here at the top of the hour, so I do want to respect folks' time and, and wrap up. Um, so let me just uh, really thank Sarah and Miriam for taking uh, time to uh, share their experiences today. Uh, it, it's, uh, I've spent 25 years working in this stuff in higher ed, and uh, there's nothing better than hearing from faculty and students about the impact that this stuff is having on them in both their kind of professional and academic lives, and to some extent, your, your personal lives as well. So I really appreciate uh, you guys taking the time to do that. Also want to thank everybody for taking time to um, listen in and, and ask some great questions. And again, I'll follow up in an email with everybody with uh, recording uh, today. So we're going to share that with colleagues. Uh, the PowerPoint slides. And then again, uh, that would be an easy way if you want to ask questions or get access to a sandbox and so forth, you can do that or just uh, send me a direct email. 
Okay, with that, thanks a lot, and everybody have a great weekend. Thanks. Bye.